Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Joel just said he pressed the button. I I think that means I can talk now. You can go. (laughs) Go ahead and go. No, wait. No, go ahead and go. (laughs) Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast. I'm the Cap, the Breeze Man right over there. Joel, I'm going to ask you a question before we get into what we're talking about today. Uh oh, I did. And yeah, he he has no idea this question is coming. But I'm going to ask you a question. So I'm putting you on the spot. And I'm not giving you time to think about it. But <laughs> tell us something about yourself that almost nobody else knows about you. Well, they don't know what I'm thinking right now about your question <laughs> that you just yeah, asked don't, me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> What do people don't what do what do people not know about me? Yeah, oh. something that uh, something that you know, even a lot of people that you know personally might not be aware of. Huh. I don't know. I um, I have visited Stonehenge. How's that? <laughs> Boo! <laughs> that doesn't feel very personal. <laughs> and I have a vague memory of it. I was. Uh, yeah, it's probably ten something or so. about some, but something about <clears throat> you, not just something you've done. Here you are going back to works again. <laughs> something I've done. <laughs> I don't know. You did put me on the spot, and I'm not good with that. So I wouldn't do good on a game show. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, I might have answers, but they they wouldn't come to me till like. See, that's the thing with my mind. Unless it's something that I really am good at talking about, like the stuff we talk about on the podcast. It's like, it's maybe two days later, the answer will come. Oh, that would have been good. That would have been so good if I would have, when Cap asked me that question, yeah, I'm not good Johnny on the spot type of thing. Well, hey, we, we can we can revisit this on another podcast. I can give you time to think about it. Yeah. Give me a couple of days or months or years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, though, on these game shows and stuff as I get older. I mean, sometimes we watch, uh, we, we were watching one the other day. I name that tune. Oh. Mm-hmm. They, they play a little snippet of a song, and then you have to try to name the title of the song. And and it, it's frustrating because, and, and it's, it's the same is true with contestants who are younger than me. They're, they're, they, they know the song. They, they can practically, you know, sing the words to it. They just can't quite grasp the title. And they're on a clock, so it puts more pressure on you. Right. Yeah, I was watching, um, I think it was on YouTube I saw this. There was, um, who's, who's the woman that's got the, the talk show? Is it Kelly Clarkson? Uh, I think so. And she had Kelsey Grammer on there from Frasier. And they oh, were yeah. doing they were doing name that um, sitcom, the opening they would play the tune for the sitcom, and or, or they wouldn't actually play the tune, but they had Morgan Freeman reading reading the lyrics <laughs> to it, and then they had to buzz in, you know buzz in and 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 it ended up being like they were at a tie, and then Morgan Freeman says okay it's like three to three or something like that, and then he says uh, here's the last question it's worth a hundred points. <laughs> And so, and so Kelsey got that. He won like 103 to 3. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> it was good. But it was like, but anyway, the point is that, yeah, listening to that, I'm like, I know that. I know that. I know that. But I couldn't spit it out. You know, both of them got got to the buzzer before I would have. Uh, well, um, we've been talking about righteousness as a gift, uh, not by works, but it came through the work of Jesus Christ, and we place faith in that. We place belief in that. And I think, Joel, with what we've talked about the last couple of programs, um, one thing that people can keep in mind, either in, in, in as they go throughout their day or if they're reading the Bible or whatever, when it comes to salvation, justification, righteousness, on one end of the spectrum, you've got works. It doesn't have to be works from the Mosaic Law per se, but you've got this element of, of works. And then on the other, the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got faith. They, they are not the same thing. And I, I just wanted to mention that because as people think about this, are good works a good thing? Um, yeah. The, I, to me, the answer to that would be yes, of course. Right. We're encouraged in Christ Jesus into good works. 
kind of the difference, I think, is that, you know, like Ephesians 2, uh, we're, we're called into to good works. We're saved by grace through faith, not of works, but we're called into it. it be, because the difference is when, when people are working to try to become something or to make themselves more acceptable to God through their own efforts, it's different than God working in and through us. And, and in my earlier years of grappling with grace. <laughs> it, that always felt like a thin, um, fine line for me to try to figure out the difference. Right. Um, it, it was confusing to me at first. It's easier for me now, having grown throughout these years. But one thing, with all that said, one thing that sometimes the, the somewhat more legalistic crowd will come back with is they, they might agree with everything or most of what we've said the last couple of weeks regarding salvation, that it's by grace through faith, that it's not of works. You can't earn your way to heaven. They'll agree with us on that, but then they'll come out. There, there's always the but. There's always the fine print. But sanctification, that's another thing. Salvation is one thing, but sanctification is another thing that we work at or, or participate, or we're allowed to participate with God in this process, that we're going to make ourselves somehow more set apart, uh, more holy, more right with God. Different people have different approaches to this on their definition of what sanctification is, but we'll talk about this for a few minutes today and see if we can't help clear some of this confusion up out there for people who still think they need to work at something to put themselves in a, a uh, position with God that's more acceptable somehow. Yeah, it goes back to what we were talking about last week, righteousness being the gift of God, uh, because it's something that we couldn't do by ourselves. Righteousness meaning you know being right with God, having right standing with him. We couldn't do enough to make ourselves right with him. And sanctification is a word that means set apart, holy, purified. We've been set apart to God. That's something that, again, something that he has done. If it were up to us to be sanctified, to sanctify ourselves enough, uh, it's something that how are we ever going to attain to it? And so the good news is that it's a gift. And so so people will say, yeah, yeah, you're right. God has done that. But, 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 and there's always that but. Like, there's always that but. You've got, there's more you've got to do. And so the question is, how much is enough and what is enough? What, what exactly is it that you have to do? If you have to make yourself sanctify, what is it that you have to do? And then again, what's the limit or what's the uh, line? What's the mark that you have to reach before you can say, I am finally sanctified. <laughs> so again, the good news is that it's something that God has done on our behalf. We love the book of Hebrews. We've we've gone through the book of Hebrews a few times on this podcast, and there are lots of times when, uh, when Paul would talk about sanctification. Hebrews talks about the will of God and what God did through Jesus, and how what Jesus did, he offered himself. Jesus said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Behold, I have come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God. And that's Hebrews 10, 5, and then skip ahead just a little, 5 through 7. Uh, By that will, verse 10, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. We have been sanctified. How were we sanctified? Does it say anything about what we did? Anything about what we have done or what we have to do? No, it's that God had a will. He prepared a body for Jesus. It says in in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, he had no pleasure. And he's talking about those sacrifices that were offered according to the law, those animal sacrifices. And Jesus said, Behold, I have come to do your will. By that will, by Jesus doing that will, offering himself once, at one time, a one-time sacrifice, by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. How can we top that? <laughs> what can we do to even match what Jesus has done as far as sanctification? And so and when people talk about how there are certain things that we have to do in order to sanctify ourselves or in order to become progressively sanctified, what are we going to do that comes anywhere close to what Jesus has done? I don't know. Do you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
down in verse 14 of Hebrews 10, this is New American Standard, for by one offering he has perfected for all time, for all time, those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit testifies or bears witness to us, saying this, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws upon their heart and on their mind, and I will write them, and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. And then the writer says this, the kind of a, this is one of my favorite, well, it's hard to pick a favorite verse, right? <laughs> this because, is a good one, though. Yeah, it, it is, because... If you understand the context of the verse, it becomes more powerful, right? Exactly, right. It's hard to just take the verse. But now where there is forgiveness, Hebrews 10, 18, where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any offering for sin. In other words, Jesus doesn't have to come back and do it all over again. He doesn't have to shed blood another time. He completed the will of God with his sacrifice. Let's look at a couple of others here. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul said this to the Corinthians, and because of him verse 30, chapter 1, because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So we have nothing to boast about. We're, we're, this gradual sanctification thing, it's just another chance to give people a, an opportunity within themselves to establish their own righteousness and boast about it because of all the things that they no longer do. How many times have you been in a church? God bless these people. Maybe, I don't even know if I did it at some point, but somebody gets up to give their uh, quote unquote testimony. Mm -hmm. And it usually quite often involves, I used to do this stuff. Now I don't do that stuff anymore. And I go to church and I pray and, oh, it's just all so good now. And and that can be a positive thing. That can be a beneficial thing. But that's not necessarily something that should be defined as a testimony, per se. Right. I get it. I know where they're coming from. I've been there. But we've got something else here that's, that's even better. We, we boast in the Lord. And I know sometimes people try to do that, and then they kind of end up slipping into boasting about themselves. <laughs> I've even seen people start talking about this stuff, and then they'll start talking about how they started giving more money. And then God started blessing them with more money. And, and uh, that's, that's another thing, though, the, the, the blessings of God. When you hear people start talking about the blessings of God coming on you because of what you do, you're, you're probably not hearing the gospel at, at that point. So anyway, that was uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 1.30. And then um, I had another one here. Oh, yeah, 1 Corinthians 6.11. Such were some of you, referring to what they used to be like, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. So this is kind of a follow-up to what he said a few chapters earlier to the Corinthians, uh, Paul here. So again, these myths uh, myths and fables that, that people want to talk about when it comes to sanctification as if it's some sort of a separate process from what Jesus accomplished for us through his blood and uh, his resurrection, the cross, all of that. We're just looking for ways to uh, pat ourselves on the back sometimes. And uh, we're here to just say, here on the Growing in Grace podcast, we're putting all of our eggs in the same basket, unless you think the chicken came first. We're putting all of our chickens in the same basket. <laughs> well, and it's a safe basket to put all our eggs in. That's that's the thing. Th going with that, I think a lot of people are scared to put all their eggs in that basket because the eggs are fragile, uh, and they, they want to make sure that they're safe, which is the irony of all this. Because, yes, they believe in Jesus. Yes, they believe in his offering, in his sacrifice. But there's got to be something I have to do. I mean, I have I know that I'm not living 100% right. Again, whatever that means in, in each person's mind. But uh, And so they think that there's something they got to do. And so they'll take some of those eggs and, and they'll try to uh, put them in, a, in what they think is their own basket. And, and try to, you know, spread it out. So at least, yeah, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I've got to do this, that, and everything else. And and in, in doing so, they're really denying, you know, that's the sacrifice of Jesus and saying really that it wasn't enough. And so they live life as if they're walking on eggshells. Yeah, <laughs> you get, yeah, anyway. 
Paul said, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're kind of diluting the blood of Jesus, really. I mean, they don't mean to, but. Right. Paul said in, in uh, Acts 20, verse 32, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. So like we were talking about last week, it's the inheritance. We have an inheritance. That's what we have. Uh, to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. It doesn't say those who are working hard at becoming sanctified, but it's those who are sanctified. So in Jesus Christ, we have been sanctified. It's instant sanctification, and it's permanent. It's it's something that we can't uh, take away from, something that we couldn't have done. Uh, you know, people talk about justification. Yes, we've been justified by faith, and, and, and then people will talk about this positional justification that's a whole nother thing oh brother it's 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 not (laughs) positional it's 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 the thing about this is that it's real this is actually what god has done he has actually in reality justified us and he has sanctified us it's something that he did it's not an ongoing process it's already happened and it remains who we are all the time it's something as we've talked about many times, that we received as a gift by grace through faith, not not based upon something that we do or don't do. So hopefully this will encourage you as you're listening that it's the grace of God, it's the gift of God, it's nothing more, nothing less, and it's nothing that you can do and nothing that our uh, our goodness or badness adds to or takes away from because it's a gift, it's an inheritance, something that we've received freely. And I I would just add real quick here, Joel, is uh, don't confuse what we've been talking about here in this new covenant of Jesus Christ with what the Jews were trying to do under the law. They they were trying to set themselves apart. You can see some things about being set apart, sanctification under the old covenant, but it was based upon what they were doing. And this is where sometimes covenants get mixed up together and, and, and people get confused and start heading down the wrong road. And yeah, one of those things, another thing, speaking of the mixing of the covenants, a lot of people, even believers, are living in a fear of whether or not they've been forgiven by God because of something Jesus said before the cross, before the new covenant came into effect. He was talking to his disciples and he said that God would only forgive them if they would forgive others. And so believers in this new covenant see those words of Jesus and wonder if they're truly forgiven. So we'll talk about the forgiveness of sins being finalized at the cross, and we'll answer the question, how can I be sure I'm completely forgiven? That's coming up next week, right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.